there do seem to be a number of new film cameras on the market or about to be on the market and that's what we're going to look at today. Well hey everybody thank you for checking in once again and welcome to another episode. Well there are lots of old film cameras on the market from the great days of film. Many of them are really nice and in really nice condition just ready to shoot. But what if you want a new film camera? If a Leica is too expensive what are the alternatives? Rumours come and go especially on the internet and truth can be a slightly difficult thing to pin down but there do seem to be a number of new film cameras on the market or about to be on the market and that's what we're going to look at today. And the first of those is an extraordinary reproduction of one of the great classic iconic film cameras the Roly 35. Now this is being reproduced by a company called Mint who are probably best known for their work rebuilding Polaroid cameras and giving those a new lease of life and they've decided to come up with a slightly tweaked camera for the 21st century a new Roly 35 and the great news is that it has this time autofocus. Now the original was a very very popular camera. I believe it sold around 2 million units. It was a very small camera with a retractable lens. You could move the lens in and out like uh, the collapsible lens of an early Barnack Leica and so because of that it's very pocketable, it was pocketable, very small and in some ways it was an ideal travel camera. Mint have updated the design very very thoughtfully, very very subtly and they've added autofocus and the camera now has a small OLED screen on the top to tell you information about you know settings and shutter speed and so on and it's a really thoughtful interpretation by people who know cameras and have a real feel for photography. It's been reproduced by people who understand the philosophy of the original cameras and they've subtly introduced the modern tech. Manual controls remain uh, the camera has a 35 millimeter lens uh, with five glass elements so it's a very nice lens. Apertures run from f2.8 to f16 the camera's all metal and it's going to be priced apparently it's not quite on the market yet but it's going to be priced between 650 to 800 dollars so I guess what around about five to 600 700 pounds something like that may be so that is a really really thoughtful interpretation reinterpretation of a classic one of the great classic cameras for the 21st century and I think they show all the signs of being able to do a very very nice job of this camera and I'd very very much like to try one so we'll have to wait and see what happens when the Roly 35 AF hits the market. But it's not the only new kid on the block. There is a new Pentax camera which I uh, talked about in an episode a few months back. Now the Pentax is going to be a half frame camera so it's going to use half the amount of film that you would usually use. It will have a vertical format similar to a smartphone and there's been a little bit of backlash by some uh, commentators and some reviewers about this and uh, some people have asked well why half frame why not produce a full frame. Half frame is inherently uh, has less resolution it produces less shallow depth of field 
and I think certain photographers, some photographers who had been looking forward to the camera were a little bit disappointed. In some ways this might seem an odd choice. Um, Pentax were known for making some of the finest film cameras and lenses back in the day. But the market has changed and the market now is not what it was 50 years ago. This camera seems to me to be chasing a younger audience and that's fine. Um, film is much more expensive than it used to be, relatively speaking, and many smartphone photographers are very used to the vertical format. Well now, I was a little bit disappointed at first, I have to be honest, but half frame is actually bigger than APS-C. So if you're shooting an APS-C camera like a Fujifilm X-T or a, a Sony A6000, for example, you're actually shooting on a smaller frame than the Pentax will have, than the half frame film camera has. And we know that APS-C cameras can produce some very, very nice images indeed. It's also worth pointing out that the half frame size is only one millimeter smaller than the motion picture frame size because in a motion picture camera the film runs vertically and you get a very nearly a half frame uh, format. I think it's uh, 24 by 17 millimeters on the Pentax and motion picture frame is 24 millimeters by 18. So it's almost the same and it seems to work pretty well in the movies so I don't think we've got too much to worry about in that respect. However if you're looking for an adjustable camera with manual settings and so on this one isn't it. It has an electronic shutter, it has electronic what's called fail safe to prevent uh, over or under exposure and it also has zone focusing with symbols just as some of the simpler cameras of the film days did. So this seems to be, what can we say, a fun camera, let's call it a fun camera, uh, aimed at a rather different market to the Roly, probably aimed at a younger market and that is no bad thing at all. We should also mention the Ektar camera from Kodak and that is on the market now. You can buy that now. It's another half frame camera but it has a plastic body. It has a 22 millimeter plastic lens. It has no user controls as such. It's got fixed focus with an f9.5 uh, aperture setting and the minimum focus distance is one meter or three feet. So that's a very simple camera indeed and it seems to be similar to the Instamatic cameras for example of the 70s, the ones that took the 126 cartridges and in fact the flash turns on with the same control as it used to do on those cameras which is a ring around the lens mount. So there's a link to Kodak cameras of the past there and that's nice. It comes in four colours, brown, black, grey and dark yellow and it's a very groovy looking little thing and it's probably a lot of fun to play with. In technical terms though it's not too different to one of the Kodak brownie box cameras of the 19th and 20th centuries. Who would have thought that similar cameras to those very very simple early popular designs would still be being made over a hundred years later. And finally a camera that's been many many years in development and manufacture and design it seems to be a really nice machine and it's the Kodak Super 8 camera. Now this is a genuinely brand new camera and I first heard of this about, gosh, I don't know, 10 to 15 years ago, thereabouts. It's been a long, long time in coming. It uses a blend of old and new technology. It has a little screen, four inch LCD 
screen that you can look at. That's the viewfinder. So you don't you don't look through a, a, a tiny little glass viewfinder. You've actually got a screen on this camera. It shoots in 16 by 9, so you can cut it with footage shot on more modern cameras and it's not going to look odd or out of place with a different aspect ratio so that's nice and it's actually got an extended gate the gate is actually slightly larger than the older super 8 cameras so the claim is that you get a little more resolution from this new super 8 camera it does have an onboard sound recorder that records to an sd card and this promises to be a really really nice movie camera for anybody who wants to shoot super 8 in a modern format and a modern aspect ratio but and there is a but this camera is going to cost around five and a half thousand dollars so around about i don't know four thousand four and a half thousand pounds something like that and it's currently sold only in limited editions. So getting your hands on one even, uh, if, assuming you can afford one, even getting your hands on one may be a difficult enterprise just now. Although the hope is and the expectation is that these will be manufactured in larger quantities. We'll see what happens there because I'm really not sure what the market is for super 8 i imagine it's very very small these days so we'll see what happens there so the film market has changed a very great deal and nobody is going to be surprised about that and there are no cameras no new film cameras available to match the great slrs of the past but there are new film cameras coming onto the market and that's a really good thing. Some of them are relatively simple while others at the other end like the Roly are more complex and promise to give the photographer more control over the image. Whether we get more film cameras, whether we get more complex film cameras, whether the film market will even support any of this, We'll just have to wait and see what happens. But the good thing is some manufacturers do have enough confidence to actually make new cameras. And that's something we should all be really pleased about. So there we are. I guess that's it from me for this week. I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of new film cameras that are available or about to become available. I hope it's been of some use and I hope it's been enjoyable. Many, many thanks to everybody who's watched. Many, many thanks to subscribers. Thank you so much for your support. And many, many thanks to patrons also. Thank you very, very much indeed for your support. Thanks to everybody. And I guess that's it from me for now. So if you're not doing anything too irksome, troublesome or bothersome next week at around this time, why not tune in? for a spot more xenography. Cheerio all.